that the government is tackling this issue, but we're actually seeing record numbers of migrants, even after the Rwanda scheme was announced. Thousands have crossed the channel. We had West Streeting on this program within the last hour or so, who says the government simply need to get a grip and tackle things like the speed of decision making when asylum seekers land here. They're waiting too long for a decision. Silence. On the 22nd of November, Tim Lawton, in a Commons Committee hearing, asked Suella Braverman, how would somebody who is legally entitled to asylum in this country, meets all the requirements, apply for asylum if they can't actually get to this country by one of the limited legal and safe routes? And Suella Braverman eventually conceded that the most likely uh, way for that person to come from Africa was to cross the channel and once they were in Britain to apply for asylum and then they would be considered. In other words, using an illegal route to get to this country. Now, she got into a mess over this. She turned to an advisor to try and get some, uh, get some security and it wasn't deeply forthcoming. She got into a mess. Now, some time has gone by since the 22nd of November, and one would have thought that uh, government ministers would be fully briefed and fully prepared for the same sort of question again. This morning, Michelle Donnellan was asked exactly the same question, though couched by the BBC interviewer in terms of how would a, a, um, a migrant from Iran with uh, fearing persecution with good reason to claim asylum, claim asylum in the UK. And again, Michelle Donnellan tried very hard to avoid answering and then finally wimped out at the last minute saying, I'm not going to get into specifics, because she can't. Because in the end, uh, this idea that um, anybody who comes here by, quote, an illegal route will be completely banned from coming back to the UK, will have their asylum application uh, ignored, this is, number one, against the principles of the 1951 Refugee Convention, which says that the way that you come to a country is uh, not relevant. And number two, it's against basic human um, dignity to reject people because you haven't provided them with the means to come here. We spend so much money and so much time developing English language programmes, we shouldn't be surprised that people want to come and use a language they know, number one. Number two, people often have families and cultural links to our country and want to come here. Number three, of course, there are good reasons why people want to flee their home country. And the idea, which is trumpeted about again and again, uh, for the most part, Michelle Donnellan was very good. She actually talked about illegal routes rather than illegal migrants. She's been well briefed. Uh, but she fell into the mistake of talking about safe countries. Well, there are safe countries. There are many safe countries between Iran and the UK. The problem is we are no longer part of Dublin Three. We are no longer, we have never been part of the Schengen uh, um, area, but we are not part of Europe. The moment we left Brexit on such a bad arrangements because of silly people like Lord Frost, who didn't look at the fine print, who didn't deal with the serious issues like Northern Ireland, like uh, finding a parallel for the Dublin Three Convention, the moment we left Brexit, we were plunged into chaos in Northern Ireland and across the Channel. We should not be surprised that a problem with people crossing the Channel in small boats in 2016 was minimal, as Amber Rudd pointed out uh, the other night um, on uh, Nadine Doris's programme, um, and is huge now. 45,000 people. Uh, Michelle Donnellan also falls into the error of saying that 45,000 people had illegally crossed. Actually, it's 45,000 people who are applying for asylum at the moment. It's not 45,000 people uh, who crossed illegally. 45,000 people, 45, people arrived in our country. We don't know how all of them crossed. Uh, they, may have, um, they may well have crossed. 
by the channel. We don't know that because the work has not been done because the Home Office has been on a go slow since Mrs May instituted her hostile environment. Facts. And it doesn't matter whether there's a priority commitment to sort this out or not. The fact is, uh, if we are going to go against international law, we are going to be in a major problem. Now, Suella Braverman thinks that she can tough it out, uh, but we've already seen how one foreign minister tried to tough it out against the system. She tried to play chicken with Lavrov. She failed. We really don't want to see major ministers, major secretaries of state playing silly games because they're too arrogant to actually do their homework and check what the reality is. Now, I personally think it would be a very good idea to sort this out. I don't think that um, stomping around and uh, knee-jerking or pouting is the way forward. The way forward is to sort out the problem. That is to provide um, safe routes, to provide um, centres for making proper applications, maybe in Calais, and to deter people from using the channel, which is dangerous. So the principle should be on the danger of the channel, rather than uh, saying that when people get here, they're not allowed to claim asylum and they're not allowed in our country for the rest of their life. That is absurd, particularly if they have a valid reason for wanting to get here. Not everybody reads The Times, The Telegraph, The Guardian. And people in Afghanistan were treated appallingly because Raab was on his back, uh, putting on more Factor 10 suntan rather than getting his work done when Kabul well, look, fell. Th we've identified the problem. You're quite right in saying, in saying that. We've got 45,000 people that travelled here illegally last year. A few years ago, that was only 300. That's why we're coming forward with additional legislation. So whilst West Treaty might say the government needs to get a grip, I would argue we are getting a grip. That's the very point of us bringing forward this legislation and saying it isn't OK if you travel here illegally. If you travel, you know, mainly these people have travelled across a number of, say, countries before they then make that journey to come to the UK in small boats. We know that uh, the majority of those people as well um, do not necessarily need to, to be claiming asylum. A lot of them are also economic migrants. It is important that the government tackles this head on. That's why we're bringing forward that legislation and details will be out over the next few days. But it's why the Home Secretary and the Prime Minister have been very clear that this is a top priority for this government. So if you're not travelling from Ukraine, from Afghanistan or from Hong Kong, can you tell me what the legal route into this country is? Good question. Well, I think the figures are around uh, 480,000 people have managed to secure uh, asylum between 2015 answer. and to date via those safe routes. And we've been, we've been clear as a government that we will be opening up more of these safe routes. But first of all, we need to tackle the illegal routes, and that's what we'll be doing this week. So if you are, for example, Iranian, fearing persecution, what is the legal route to come to this country? Look, as I've said, we will be opening up more safe routes. We've taken 480,000 people since 2015. We have a record on this of, of protecting people in cases of need. We can't take everybody. That is a basic principle here. But if we look at what we're tackling this week, we're tackling people that are coming here illegally. But as I said before, um, many of those people have traveled through a number of safe countries before they even make that journey to the UK. That's not OK. We've got to close down that route, uh, not just for the interests of British citizens, but also for the interests of those people that make that very, very dangerous route. And, of course, uh, criminal gangs are exploiting them in their process of doing so. Forgive me, I I'm struggling to, under to hear the answer to this question. What is the legal route if you are Iranian, fearing persecution, and want to come to this country? I'm not going to get into the specifics of country X to, to country here. What I've said is so there are subsidies the available. We've taken 480,000 people How does since somebody who desperately needs 20, help 50, answer it? And we're opening up. Well, look, look, I think that that is uh, grossly unfair. I'm not the immigration minister. As you know, I'm the science, technology uh, and innovation no, secretary uh, of state. And that isn't Cabinet the point responsibility. Here. The point is that 
We are tackling illegal immigration. We, we are going to open we. up other safe routes, as I've said various times on this show today. But we do need to tackle illegal immigration. You know, those boats are not filled with people coming from uh, for, from countries that desperately need help. And many How times you know? they're filled with people that are actually economic migrants. Um, and Some also been exploited by criminal gangs who take their money uh, in a, on a very perilous journey. That's something that we've got to stop. We've got to get a grip of. Um, and that's what we're doing this week. So you don't know? But I didn't say I don't know. I said there are a variety so of different routes. I'm not here um, as an immigration lawyer to go through. Look, look, I think you know, I'm not here as an immigration lawyer to go through specific case by case uh, processes that an individual could follow. What I'm telling you is in what the government trouble. is doing this week in terms of legislation to make good on one of the prime minister's five key priority pledges to the British nation. Um, it shows that we're a government that is dealing with the problems at hand coming forward with that bill. We have already taken measures. One of the points that you made before was uh, what about the backlog and getting through that and processing it quicker. That's why we've added more caseworkers. That's why we've added more enforcement officers. We're tackling this in a variety of different ways. And that's what this government is all about delivering. Well, British United's proposal would actually involve detaining hundreds of thousands of people. Where are you planning to put them? I know the Rwanda scheme would potentially take some, but that's in the hundreds, not the thousands. So where would these people go? Well, the details of this scheme will be out um, in terms of the, the legislation in the coming days. So you'll you'll get more information. Uh, just a few few more days to wait for that. OK, uh, finally, there's a, a story on the front page of The Times this morning. I'm just going to hold this uh, newspaper up to the camera. I'm, I'm not sure if you do have a monitor, but I, I'm guessing you probably will have seen the front pages of the uh, papers this morning. Former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who's nominating his father for a knighthood. What do you make of that? Well, I, I've read that story. It, it is speculation, of course, at this moment in time, so we'll have to see if that is true if or not. If it's true, what do you make of it? Well, look, I, there is a process in place for uh, prime ministers to nominate people for peerages and for, for honorary uh, titles and awards, etc. Uh, and that's that's always been the case in, in political parties of every colour. Let's wait and see whether this story is, is true or not before we start speculating and talking about ifs, maybes and buts.